All right. Hello. This is the uh, video for Monday, April the 20th. Hope everyone's doing well. Today we're going to be uh, introducing our theme for the week, which is this idea of radicals. Uh, radicals are a mathematical expression, and there are several different forms of them. The most common uh, radical is the square root. Oftentimes in mathematical expressions, we're asked to simplify a radical, uh, which does not mean uh, not solving it. Solving it might mean, for example, putting it into a calculator and coming up with a decimal. We're not looking for a decimal answer. We're looking for uh, an answer that's, that, that might be a, a, a whole number. It might be an integer. Uh, it might still have a radical in it. Okay, so let's talk about the, the kinds of radicals we're likely to encounter. Now, in today's assignment, we're just going to deal with square roots. But that's not the only kind of root that, that you can have. In fact, it's limitless, the, the numbers of, of uh, radicals that you might encounter. However, in real life, you're probably just going to see three different radicals, okay? You're probably going to see the square root. Typically, when you see this little house-looking thing and no number next to it, you can pretend that there's a tiny little two there. That would mean square root. It's probably there on your calculator. However, because it's the most common radical, usually when we see a square root, it doesn't bother having the two there. It's just a little house. However, the cubic root, to distinguish it from a square root, will always have a three. And the fourth root will have a four. So let's talk about what this means. Okay, so uh, if... Uh, if, for example, uh, we're talking about um, simplifying a radical, we might say that a square root would be, uh, the square root of a squared would be a, right? Because a squared is a times a, right? So we have to think about what we're talking about when we, uh, when we think of these as exponents. So these numbers right here are going to be related to exponents, okay? Um, so the cubic root, for example, let's let's use a real number, okay? Let's talk about uh, 16. The square root of 16 is what? Well, it's 4 because 4 times 4 equals 16. So therefore, the square root of 16 is 4. Now, we've dealt with square roots a lot, so I know that that's not confusing to you at all. A cubic root, though, is something that would be uh, something times itself three times, right? So the cubic root of 8 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8, right? 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 again is 8. So the cubic root of 8 is 2. The, uh, the fourth root then is, is uh, what number you might take that's multiplied by itself four times to get that number. For example, uh, if you were to do uh, the cubic root of 16, so the square root of 16 is 4, but the, the, the fourth root of 16 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16. Okay, So that's the relationship between your, your radical, your root, if you will, and the exponent, right? So... <clears throat> In today's lesson, we're just going to deal with square roots. We're just going to deal with these. I know this is a review, uh, but as the week goes on, we're going to be dealing with uh, additional forms of radicals. So it's going to be very important that you, you stay up with the work and that you watch these videos. All right, so let's talk about what these might look like. Okay, so if we were to have the square root of 4 times the square root of 10, that equals the square, square root of 40, okay? So the square root of 4 times the square root of 10 equals the square root of 40. You can do this with multiplication. You can't do it with addition and subtraction, but you can with multiplication, which means that if I'm given the square root of 40, I can say that that is the square root of 4 times 10, okay? So... 
while 40 is not a perfect square, and remember we've, we've worked with perfect squares, so, and it's gonna be very important, you just might as well go ahead and memorize your perfect square. So one times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16, et cetera. All the way up, uh, I mean, obviously since childhood, you should have had your at least your 12s memorized, but you might as well go ahead and, and memorize all the way up through the 15s, that'd probably be helpful. Notice what happens here, okay? That the square root of of uh, of four is two. Uh, now ten is not a perfect square. Okay, so look what I can do. I can solve this part. I can take this square root out. In other words, two is the square root of four, and I can just leave the ten inside my radical. In other words, the square root of forty equals two times the square root of 10, and we might say 2 on the square root of 10, okay? This would be my final answer. Okay, so here's what I'm going to look for. When I'm given a square root and some number is inside here, I'm going to look for a factor that is a perfect square, okay? Uh, so let's say, for example, I'm given uh, 98. Now, there is nothing I can think of that is multi you know full whole number uh, that can you know multiply by itself and end up with 98 but think of this if i were to do the square root of 49 times the square root of 2 wouldn't that be 98 and 49 is a perfect square because 7 times 7 uh, is 49 so this would equal 7 times the square root of 2 final answer right here okay now, let me look at uh, some other examples for you here. Um, if I have an, uh, an x squared, let's say I had, for example, um, the square root of 25x squared. Okay? Well, 25 is a perfect square, right? 5 times 5. So I can take that outside of my radical. Uh, I know what the square root of 25 is. It's 5. I also know what the square root of x squared is because x times x is x squared. So I can take this out and I can take this out, which means I'm going to do away with my radical entirely. So the square root of 25x squared is 5x. Okay? Because if I multiplied 5x times 5x, I would equal, I would end up with 25x squared. So this is the square root of 25x squared. Um, Let's say I'm given something like, oh, uh, I don't see where I just laid my, that's all right, do it the hard way. Let's say I've already got a number outside my radical. Let's say I've got like a negative 2 on the square root of, uh, I don't know, 300. Okay? Now, 300 is not a perfect square. However, it has a factor. I can think of factoring it, and it does have a factor that's perfect square because 300 would be 3 times 100. In other words, that's the same thing as saying negative 2 and the square root of 3 times 100. And I can take the 100 out because the square root of 100 is 10. Notice what happens here. I've got negative 2 times 10 on the square root of 3. I can't do anything with my radical. It's just going to hang out there. However, I can multiply negative 2 times 10. And that gives me negative 20 on the square root of 3. All right. In today's, uh, today's worksheet, I, it starts off the top half of the page are just some, some principles. You want to hold on to this because it's some things we're going to be working with over the next few days. Uh, truths and untruths. In other words, things that you can do to solve a radical, things that you cannot do to solve a radical. And then there are six problems. Uh, I think all of them are, are solved right here. Uh, let me see. I'm looking at, looking at one of them. I'm looking at a couple of them here, actually. Let's do a couple more. What about with fractions? So if I'm given the square root of 4 25ths, uh, that's the same thing as the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 25. Uh, 
So in other words, we know the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 25 is 5, so the square root of 4 25ths is 2 fifths. What if I just have a radical on uh, as the, the numerator or the denominator? Well, that's easy as well. Um, <clears throat> what if I had, um, let's say I've got uh, 7 over uh, the square root of 63, okay? Um, thinking about this, let's do, let's do a perfect square down here. Uh, let's do 64. Okay, so 7 over the square root of 64, well, I'm not going to do anything with my 7 yet. I'm just going to leave it there, but I can solve my radical because the square root of 64 is 8, and that's, that's simplified. All right, so uh, that is our intro to simplifying radicals. There will be more to come over the next week. Peace out, dogs.